And then you'll see this little gear symbol, which is simulate. And notice how the, um, the tag that came up, it's either uh, uh, function key two or just hit the gear and left click on it. And we can see that the netlist was created and everything's done and it automatically pops us up into the, uh, the plot uh, uh, display. Notice now too that there's a divider.sch which is your schematic and a divider.dpl for display. So there's two different windows that you can toggle back and forth between. Let's just go for tabular and we will bring tabular version in here and we will uh, look at V in and double click on it and it comes up into the graph box and a V out double click or double click on a V out and hit apply and hit OK and now and it still wants to do another box so we want to hit escape we've got a V in of 10 and a V out of 5 which makes complete sense since the resistors were equal and we can file save the divider.tpl. Now if we click back over here to our schematic, we can see that uh, our schematic's still where it was. Now, we have a number of other choices here in terms of uh, picking um, things to do here. And from a simulation standpoint, what we can do is move this DC simulation out of the way. And let's go back in here and do something here where we will get rid of this battery. So we'll delete that. And we will come back in and bring in sources. And in this case, we're going to bring in an AC voltage source. I'm going to park that where the battery was and then hit escape. And we have a one volt uh, source, so this should be one volt peak um, source. And let's double click on this. So if we double click, this display will come up and it will show that uh, the value has been uh, shown to display in the schematic over here, but the frequency typically is not on default. So we will tell it to display the frequency and the phase, even though we don't care about that right now. Let's just look at everything and theta, even though we don't care about it, just so we can see that it shows up. So now we can go in here and uh, let's just leave this, let's change this to a megahertz with the big M there and hit enter. And then now we want to go back to our simulations block here and let's do a transient simulation. And in this case, um, we'll click down in here and we will want to display um, make sure that the number of elements is displayed, a number of uh, simulations. And so let's go for at least 111. Remember that at a, at a, at a megahertz, this, this is like uh, a thousand uh, times what we really need. So maybe we should uh, trim this back and well, we'll leave it. So, let's hit the gear. It doesn't take too long. And we can hit Cartesian and bring a Cartesian in to our simulator, our display area. And let's plot. Now note that there's dependent and independent. The independent or the dependent ones are the ones we care about. So V in of VT dependent, apply, and V out, apply, and then hit OK. And let's hit, hit escape so it 
doesn't do anything uh, to add, in terms of adding more. So the DC doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore. But notice um, the plot here that we've now got a an image showing the uh, the V in, which is the, the this blue, and I'm colorblind. This might be red, black. I don't know. Darker color is is at uh, about a half, whereas the V in is uh, at one volt peak, and it's probably not going to a half because we don't have enough uh, data points. But so it's probably missing a few there, and this is just uh, uh, averaging things. But uh, this is a way to see uh, a real time transient response of the circuit. So that's uh, just a good start for DC and transient analysis. And after this, we can go and uh, expand into S parameters and possibly look at uh, bringing up some transistors for biasing purposes and looking at some signals there.